Today from the global lane, gone AWOL. Where is North Korea's Kim Jong-un? Something is amiss. Indebted to China, what can America do to hold Beijing accountable for the COVID-19 pandemic? Stay at home overreach. The U.S. Attorney General targets state and local governments for violating American civil rights. States back in business. What it means for unemployed workers and the U.S. economy in the days ahead. Activists arrested. Time to impose sanctions against China and Hong Kong. And it's all right here on the Global Lane. Remember the Where's Waldo craze of the late 1980s and 90s? Now there's the Where's Waldo social distancing edition. It's easier to find Waldo during the COVID-19 pandemic. But meanwhile, on the political front, everyone is wondering, where's Kim Jong-un? The North Korean dictator has missed some key events in Pyongyang and events that a North Korean leader never misses, like the Day of the Sun celebration, commemorating the birth of Un's grandfather, Kim Il-sung. Also, Kim was a no-show at recent ceremonies marking the founding of the Korean People's Army. So what has happened to Kim Jong-un? Has he suffered a heart attack? Is he dead, sick with COVID-19, or something else? Well, joining us with some thoughts is Asian foreign affairs analyst, author, and columnist Gordon Chang. Gordon, it's good to see you again. So tell us, what's happened to Kim Jong-un? Any hard evidence of anything or well, only conjecture at this point? Mostly conjecture. Um, as you point out, what we do know is he missed those two events. And he has never missed a day of the sun celebration as ruler of North Korea. So that's an indication that something is amiss. But what it is, we really don't know. Um, there's the vegetative state, coma, end of the spectrum. And the other is that he's just sort of quarantined himself uh, because of COVID-19. And, of course, since he's a Kim ruler, we can't dismiss the possibility that he's just messing with us. Um, but I actually think it's toward the more serious end. Um, but at this particular time, uh, we're just going to have to wait and find out. Well, I know from my many years of reporting about North Korea, there are always plenty of rumors, speculation, disinformation about the hermit kingdom and its rulers. So what makes it different this time? Anything? Well, the thing that we've got to be concerned about is who's controlling North Korea's nuclear weapons, um, just because they're now much more capable of wrecking destruction um, across the world. So we've got to be concerned. You know, if Kim is in, in a coma or incapacitated or dead, there's going to be a struggle at the top of the North Korean regime. We know that there are two Kim family figures who are probably going to fight each other. There's Kim Yo-jung, uh, Kim Jong-un's younger sister, who's in control of some elements of the North Korean regime, such as the propaganda department, which is extremely important in, in the Kim regime. And there's also Kim's uncle, uh, Kim Pyong-il, um, a son of Kim Il-sung, the regime founder. And also, he's got some advantages as well. So um, this is a regime that could uh, spend a long time tearing itself apart. And we've got to be concerned what happens with the weapons of mass destruction. And so I guess you're suggesting we need to just stay calm and continue our policy. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, we just got to deter North Korea. Now, the South Koreans and the Chinese both say everything is fine. Uh, in that case, there's no reason for worry. But until we see Kim actually walk out in public um, with something that we can be sure is contemporaneous, we nonetheless need to be concerned. Gordon, shifting to China, the Chinese have announced that they're close to releasing a COVID-19 vaccine to the public. I find that interesting that the country actually responsible for this global pandemic has now announced suddenly that it has a cure. That, And we've seen reports about those tainted COVID-19 test kits. Remember those that were sent to the U.S. So can we trust a vaccine from China? I don't think so. I mean, this is extraordinarily fast. Um, and if North and if, if China actually does have a vaccine, we got to be concerned about uh, this whole origin of the of the coronavirus, um, because then it starts to look like a setup. Now, I don't think that it is, um, but I think what Beijing has done is it's released uh, um, a vaccine much too fast, um, an indication that it might very well may not work. 
China's critical of Australia for demanding an investigation of the Wuhan Level 4 lab. It'll be hard for the U.S. to push for the same when China owns at least $1 trillion of our debt, Gordon. And Americans purchase more than a half trillion dollars in Chinese products each year. So what can the United States do to advance transparency and hold China accountable for this COVID-19 virus? Well, China has much more leverage over Australia than the United States. Um, when it comes to China versus the U.S., we've got most of the high cards. Um, so I'm not worried about that. What we can do and what we must do is impose costs on China so that uh, the Chinese leaders don't spread another virus in the future. Um, Chinese leaders knew that the COVID-19 was human-to-human -human transmissible for perhaps maybe five and a half, six weeks, and yet they tried to convince the world that it was not. And at the same time, they pressured countries uh, not to impose travel restrictions and quarantines on arrivals from China. You put those two things together, and it indicates a maliciousness on the part of China. That Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, having seen what coronavirus did to China, decided to level the playing field by spreading it elsewhere. And if that's what he wanted to do, well, he would have done exactly what, in fact, he did do. And so we've got to be um, very concerned that uh, this is going to happen again. So we need to impose those costs. And we can do that by seizing Treasury obligations that you just referred to. We shouldn't do that by ourselves, but we should do it in conjunction with other countries. And um, we should be cutting our trade links with China. You know, China's not reformable, unfortunately, or at least communist China's not reformable. So we need to reduce our vulnerability to it. Well, you sound like you're like mind with Senator Tom Cotton on that. Okay, author, Asia analyst Gordon Chang, thank you, Gordon, for your time and insights. We appreciate you. Thanks, Gary. The home front. Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Home Front, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. CBN honors the men and women in our military with an initiative called Helping the Home Front. It partners with churches across the country to meet the needs of their military families, from repairing homes to wiping out medical bills for wounded veterans. On the Home Front, Tuesday morning at 10:30. If you want to be an attorney with a passion for serving people and for excellence, Regent University needs to be high on your list. Regent's award-winning law school doesn't just create lawyers. We create leaders, judges, prosecutors and defense lawyers, civil litigators and leaders in government. My focus has been trying to really make sure we have the future leaders we need for the, the bench and the bar and for society generally. You'll learn from highly credentialed leaders who are current and former judges, distinguished scholars, and ACLJ counsel. I'm so glad I chose Regent. Uh, the relationships here have been amazing. The faculty have been amazing. Not everybody's called to the same thing when they leave law school, but they're called by a God who has a purpose for their lives, and he is going to use that education to make a difference in the world. Regent will prepare you to be a purpose-driven, practice-ready lawyer. To start your rewarding law career, complete the online application, submit your transcripts, and take the law school admissions test by July. Apply today. Here on the home front, U.S. Attorney General William Barr has ordered the Department of Justice to begin legal action against state and local governments that are violating civil liberties during the COVID-19 pandemic. Apparently, Barr is responding to concerns expressed by protesters and others that governors and mayors have gone too far in restricting the rights of citizens during the coronavirus shutdowns. Here with more is John O'Connor. Mr. O'Connor is a legal analyst, former assistant U.S. attorney, and author of the book Postgate, How the Washington Post Betrayed Deep Throat, Covered Up Watergate, and Began Today's Partisan Advocacy Journalism. John, it's so good to see you again. So specifically, what action do you expect the attorney general to take here and against which states and why? Well, first of all, there are two 
prongs to what he's doing. One is constitutional, in which he's dead on right. The Constitution can only go so far in permitting the police power and its restrictions on, on uh, folks, on citizens. At some point, police action, and that means restrictions for health and safety, that's what I mean by police action, runs into the constitutional problem of a taking under the Fifth Amendment. So we're getting to the point where these restrictions are taking. If you, takings. If you're an electrician and you can't practice your trade, your business is being taken from you. And so I expect him to jawbone and to threaten some of these uh, states with lawsuits. Uh, perhaps, in some cases, uh, there might be some sanctions here where the executive branch otherwise gets involved and, and starts withdrawing aid. There is no doubt that the states uh, especially, for instance, Michigan. If you keep somebody from going fishing, for for God's sake. Well, I, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you about that, John, because I have friends and family in Michigan. I'm from Michigan originally, and they say Governor Gretchen Whitmer's orders are extreme because you can buy marijuana, alcohol, lottery tickets in Michigan, but not seeds to plant. And fishermen aren't allowed to use outboard motors. But I would suspect that many people are mostly concerned about religious rights and privacy freedoms. What about that? Well, I just mentioned the Fifth Amendment, the taking aspect. It is more egregious that, that uh, First Amendment rights are interfered with. The idea that you cannot drive into a parking lot and practice your faith is abominable. That, to me, is a violation of the First Amendment. I think whoever it was that uh, prohibited that, I think they quickly retracted it and said, well, this is a technology exercise. We're going to let you do it. Uh, not acknowledging that maybe people have a First Amendment right to uh, free exercise of religion. I don't know anybody's heard of that one. But it is clearly, clearly an abridgment of that right. Also at the DOJ, Prosecutor John Durham is investigating a coordinated leak campaign against retired General Michael Flynn. It appears the FBI set up General Flynn, withheld evidence favorable to him, and also threatened his son, all for political purposes. What are your thoughts about this, and do you think Flynn will be exonerated? Well, I think the judge has power to uh, dismiss this case just in the interest of justice because of abominable uh, Justice Department con conduct. Remember, they, they threatened Logan Act persecutions. That's why uh, they, uh, Flynn was probably not honest, frankly, on, about his phone call because they had uh, threatened this phony Logan Act. Uh, violation. Then secondly, Comey set him up from the get-go. Uh, they knew what they were doing. They're trying to entrap him. They asked him questions about which they already had the answers. That is the classic perjury trap investigation. So you have a perjury trap where all they're doing, they know the answer to the question. They're just hoping you'll lie. Uh, number two, they also violated, in my view, his Sixth Amendment rights, as Comey has admitted uh, as he boasted to some of his uh, audience, that he knew that normally uh, under the Obama and Bush administrations, you would have to go through their lawyers for such an interview, that the Trump administration was just unpacking its furniture and they didn't have those uh, procedures set. So they knew they were getting around his right to counsel. And what you're doing is you're bypassing government lawyers, uh, you're bypassing his own lawyers. So again, Maybe there was nothing written down that's an absolute uh, black letter violation, but it really stinks to high heaven. And when you put all of it together, plus the email showing they're setting this guy up from August on, uh, if I were the judge, I would say this thing stinks. We're getting out of here. And he's a tough guy, and I hope he does it, because this is really an example of how the Justice Department was politicized. Uh, everyone Comey brought to the top was uh, an acolyte of his politically, and they were all plotting in very political ways. And Flynn is one of the victims, and I hope that a patriotic guy like this, who's devoted his whole life to protecting the country, doesn't get the shaft from his own Justice Department. There's no good that came from the actions of the FBI here. What, what were they trying to do here other than trap Flint? That's what they were doing.
Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. Highlight your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary. Or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible. All in one place. The CBN Bible, available at cbn.com slash Bible or the iTunes App Store. This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news. Exclusive stories and programs. Credible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN Newswatch because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. Right on time. From Bowl. Pepper's Pizza Palace is donating pizza for everyone today. Wait, 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 wait. I have big plans today. Trust in God even when times are tough. He has a plan for your life. Hey, we're going to be late for the grand opening. My parents want me to help with this outreach thing, feeding the community. What am I supposed to do here? Superbook! Join the Superbook Club and get Superbook The Birth of Moses, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Pharaoh ordered all newborn Hebrew boys thrown into the Nile River, and I have a three-month-old brother. The Birth of Moses, yours for a gift of only $25. What will you do the next time the soldiers come? I do not know, but I trust God has a plan for all of us. Superbook Club members free streaming for seasons one, two, and three is now available. Back in business, 15 states are reopening parts of their economies this week. It comes after 26 and a half million Americans filed unemployment claims so far this spring. So what impact will these partial state openings have on the U.S. economy? Here to set us straight is national radio and TV host of Financial Issues, Dan Celia. Dan. Good to see you again. So please tell us things are looking up, correct? Things are looking up. You know, I think every little bit is going to help as we begin to get back to work. I think it's going to be a slow go of it, but I think it helps consumers feel a little bit better. It helps, obviously, the small businesses. A lot of these small businesses are going to go back knowing and hoping that best case is going to be they're going to break even on the on what they do or maybe uh, uh, help them survive. And worst case is that it doesn't help at all. And they still may be in some trouble. But again, just the notion of getting back uh, presents itself as some optimism to a lot of people. And I think that optimism will turn into be uh, a, a very good place as long as we don't have a resurgence of, you know, the COVID, uh, Fauci, Dr. Fauci said on Tuesday that he believes that we are going to have a very rough fall. In other words, this coming back. And of course, just those kinds of things in the back of minds of businesses the midsize and larger businesses, even if they're able to go back, are going to hold back because they're going to be a little fearful of going all through this again. Now, Dan, you talked about the businesses. And what about bankruptcy? A recent Chamber of Commerce poll found that one in 10 businesses said they're less than a month from closing permanently. That must be a major concern. It is a huge concern because the whole idea of the aid packages that we're giving is to help businesses survive, particularly those larger small businesses, uh, even the small ones. We need desperately to keep small businesses alive. And I think everybody in the administration knows that because it's going to slow down everything. Remember, Gary, that's the biggest employer in the country are small businesses. So uh, I think the, the government wanted to do everything they could to allow them to limp along long enough 
to hopefully get a little resurgence in business and start to survive. We really need them to survive. So when you see those kinds of numbers, one in 10, that's not as bad as it could be, obviously, but that's only the first month. If it goes, it could go longer <clears throat> and that could turn into, you know, uh, two, three, four and in, in, in 10. And that's going to be a huge, huge problem because it's hard to get the economy running if we're not ready to run when we're able to. And that's why we've got to keep those small businesses alive. Okay, so we've seen about 15 states opening up back up this week. More are soon to follow in May. Both Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and the president say we'll see the economy strengthen in July, August, September. What are your thoughts, Dan? What's likely to happen as we move through the summer and into the fall? We're, we're going to see the economy not get a whole lot weaker. I don't know that we're going to see it strengthen uh, this summer, maybe by the end of August, if we are still moving forward. In other words, we still haven't seen any kind of resurgence. Or if we get a treatment, of course, if we get a treatment that is consistent, readily available, that'll change everything. If we get a vaccine, that'll be a silver bullet and we'll be back sooner than we think. But uh, assuming that we're going to stay like we are right now, best case scenario, best case scenario would be uh, end of August, middle of September, before we really start seeing the economy, GDP growth beginning to improve. Just in time for the fall presidential and congressional campaigns. Okay, Dan <laughs> Celia, financial Hello, issues host. <laughs> Thanks for your time, your insights. We always appreciate you, Dan. You're welcome, Gary. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Christians around the world are standing with the Israelis. But why? In CBN's free magazine, Friends of Israel, you'll discover why Christians are supporting the Jewish state, how Israel is fulfilling prophecy as a light to the nations, and ways you can pray for the people of Israel. Israel needs the support of friends like you. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Friends of Israel. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, yes. Lord, into public schools. The Prayer Link, Tuesday nights at 6.30. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm going to teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series. While the world was distracted by the coronavirus pandemic last week, Beijing launched a major crackdown against pro-democracy leaders in Hong Kong. Police arrested 14 activists, including 81-year-old former Hong Kong Democratic Party chair Martin Lee. Lee's a longtime activist who led pro-democracy demonstrations before and during Great Britain's handover of Hong Kong to China back in 1997. I talked with Lee and other activists at that time. Now, 23 years later, comes his arrest for what the Hong Kong Security Bureau says is, quote, organizing and participating in unlawful assemblies last August and October. Why now? Why were these leaders arrested at this time? 
Joshua Wong, one of the leaders of the political group Domosisto, says Communist Party officials are trying to reap some benefits from the coronavirus crisis. They know activists are unable to respond by taking to the streets during the pandemic. Just the tactics of Beijing, but with the world leaders and how global community stem of Hong Kong, uh, we will never step backward. Uh, even our, under the outbreak of virus, we can't uh, mobilize people take to the street. But on the upcoming summer, it's time, it's time for us to reassemble and also let Beijing to know that we will not afraid and kowtow to the crackdown. Hong Kong government is not only targeting youngsters, but also targeted elderly. Prominent political figures in Hong Kong now were arrested, including more than 8,000 Hong Kongers uh, were arrested since last summer. But our uphill battle will still continue. Uh, Martin at the age of 81, being arrested by police with house search, which is really terrible and insane. And it's also implied in the previous day, only young activists belong to the progressive wing need to face political prosecution. But Martin Lee and Jimmy Lai and other political figures need to face the court case, the trial on May. So it's time for the world to realize that it's necessary to stand with Hong Kong. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the arrests were inconsistent with commitments made under the Sino-British Joint Declaration, which promised the city would enjoy political freedoms. Beijing responded, saying the U.S. response was gross interference in China's Hong Kong affairs. But Joshua Wong says what happens in Hong Kong is everyone's business. Hong Kong is an international city. Global community must have a say on Hong Kong's economy being threatened by Beijing. Actions speak louder than words, and I echo on Speaker Pelosi urged US President Trump to implement the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act passed in the US Congress last year and signed by President Trump. And it's time to target government official and riot police in Hong Kong abuse of power and suppress on human rights. And presidential implementation of the Hong Kong Human Rights Act is more than symbolic. Those found to have violated human rights in Hong Kong could be hit with tough sanctions, including bans on their visas and the freezing of assets in U.S. banks. Folks, it's time for President Trump to implement those sanctions. We must stand with the people of Hong Kong, one of the most important international markets in the world. It must remain free, and the people are deserving of universal suffrage and the right to enjoy free, prosperous lives. Finally, Wong told me it is his Christian faith that motivates him to keep pressing forward for freedom in Hong Kong. What I believe is uh, God will make a way when there seems to be no way especially when we feel downhearted or depressed. Uh, we as Christians should be the salt and light in the society. And during this COVID-19 pandemic, let's remember the words of Isaiah 58, verse 10. If you give yourselves to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness and your gloom will become like midday. No reason for doom and gloom. The light of Jesus overcomes all darkness. Well, that's it today from the Global Lane. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Twitter. And until next time, be blessed.